Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! So, I, I, I want to try to do... I don't know if I'm getting this right or not. Because the thing about trenches is that if the people in the other trench are adopting certain tactics, is it really wise to get out of yours, wander into no man's land where you run a very real risk of being hit from both sides and trying to install some sort of rules? It's interesting that the, the, I've got the full text of the speech that David Miliband is giving later today and indeed of the, the Fulbright lecture that he's, he's giving later in the week um, and it talks about essentially rules-based institutions, regulations, i.e. things that we all have to abide by and just imagine you knew nothing about what I believe with regard to things like fairness and, and, and equality and decency, you, know, you just, just park all of that, okay? How, how quickly we've come to a place where your reaction, our reaction, to a given incident, a controversial incident, a provocative incident, is determined and defined not by what is happening, but by who it is happening to. And that really frightens me. And I, I, the reason why I say I'm not quite sure how to approach this, not just in the context of this Mark Field story that is understandably dominating the, um, uh, the shallow end of, of the headlines today. But in, in the context of almost everything, I didn't know the full details of what David Miliband would be talking to us about. And, and it, it doesn't immediately lend itself to an analysis of this um, uh, incident at the mansion, hall, at mansion House last night. But in a way it does, because it's like a rules-based institution. My attitude towards footage of a man manhandling a woman uh, takes a degree of context into account, i.e. how big is the woman, does she appear to be posing a threat, where is, where is the manhandling taking place, how is everybody else around reacting, but it doesn't take into account the identity of the two people involved. I, I hope I'm right. It's, do you know, oddly, because we've mentioned Joe Cox this morning in the context of people somehow using her as a justification for violence against women, it's, it's such an appalling slur upon her memory to see to see that happening and no prizes for guessing the sort of characters who who've been doing that this morning a woman murdered becomes a justification for a woman being manhandled by an mp a male mp quite a burly male mp but weirdly i know i refer to this occasionally i probably shouldn't pay too much heed i used to say to the to the madder fringes of social media but it really made a point for me and you may remember at the time how surprised i was when Joe Cox's widower, Brendan Cox, um, got into bother over allegations and, um, and admitted behaviour, inappropriate behaviour in previous jobs that he'd done, I, 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 my, my Twitter, this was before I'd sort of installed all the, all the um, quality filters and, and mutes and blocks on an industrial scale that people like me need to have in place in order to enjoy social media, it, it exploded that night and and what it exploded with and some of these people were real they weren't all anonymous accounts or, or or bots or people with 13 numbers after their name what it exploded with oddly because i'd been very outspoken about how disgusting i fi find donald trump's self-confessed sex offending it exploded with lots of people saying i would somehow be defending brendan cox the next morning and it really worked for me as a sort of academic exercise i couldn't work out why why on earth would and then you think back to the calls we've taken recently there was a lad called steve on three weeks ago I was talking about sides again bringing donald trump into the conversation i i said what why 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 don't you mind his lies you know he, he stands up in in, in london a hundred yards away from a big protest and claimed that there was no protest, claimed that there were thousands of people cheering him, when there simply weren't. It's that line in Orwell about the party told them not to trust the evidence of their own eyes and ears. It was their final most terrible command. We're there, we're over the line, dudes. We're down the rabbit hole. You saw it here, on your screens. Donald Trump telling you not to trust the evidence of your own eyes and ears, and, and, and lots of people, including Steve, who seemed like a perfectly decent bloke, they, they obeyed him. They decided not to trust. And when I said why, it's because it annoys people on your side. 
I said, well, what side am I on? Who else is on my side? He said, Sadiq Khan. I said, well, what? Where, where does this come from? All I can think of is that I, I, I often say, don't judge people solely based upon their ethnicity. Judge them by their behaviour. In which case, there are plenty of reasons to criticise Sadiq Khan. I do it myself. And then he said, my wife is Indian. And I got even more confused about, what, what is this entrenchment? What is this polarisation? What are these sides that we're all being exhorted to pick? I, I, I can only define the other lot. I can't define the side I'm supposed to be on because I'm not going to defend inappropriate behaviour or, or, or sex offending or violence against women. Whoever does it, it makes no odds to me. I think even I'd go so far as to say you feel more let down when it's somebody who you think shares your world view behaving in a way that is repellent to your world view. So, you know, I, I sort of find myself thinking if it was a politician that I liked, and there are a few, that had attacked this woman, I'd feel more unhappy, more outraged, perhaps, than I would if it was a politician. I've got to be honest with you, I don't know much about Mark Field. I don't have a view on him one way or the other. But everybody else does. Everyone else has got a passionate view on this. And I don't understand why. So, in, as a sort of exercise in imagination, what we have here is a, 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 a woman, and people are saying she might have had a knife on her, but again, if you're going to use might have as a justification for violence, then you're going to end up like the Wild West. You can go around chinning whoever you want, claiming that you thought they might have had a knife. He has apologised unreservedly, which means he acknowledges his behaviour was unacceptable. So why are people still defending him? Answer, they think he's on their side. I mean, who's on the other side? Oh, some, some lefty protester. Well, I don't know. Does, does caring for the environment make you left-wing? Zach Goldsmith is, is a very passionate environmentalist. Last time I checked, I don't think anyone would have described him as left-wing. What side is he on? Why is, why is it presumably a lefty thing to care about the planet? And it isn't, is it? It's, it's, it's back to Steve. It's back to, yeah, but your lot always banging on about gay rights or, 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 or the environment or feminism or, or, or whatever it might be. And, and you sort of think, well, what would you rather we banged on about? If not inequality and unfairness, what else is the point of political discourse? Well, why don't you talk about how... Uh, you sort of go, well, because it's not true. Why don't you talk about how straight white men are a persecuted minority? Because it's nonsense. Anyway, sorry, I had quite a lot to get off my chest this morning. So the question then becomes not, is it okay to attack women? Although, presumably, some of my callers will be answering that question. Um, and presumably, they'll be answering it in the affirmative. But I'd really like you to have a crack at, when did this start happening? Because it was really interesting having David Miliband sitting there. Sort of not that long ago that he was Foreign Secretary. You know, just over a decade, around about a decade. And he looked very likely to be the next Labour leader for a while before his brother pipped him to the post. I'm pretty sure back then you could have had a fairly objective consensus on a male politician apologising unreservedly for manhandling a woman, that is the point at which we all agree he's bang out of order. He's not even trying to defend himself. But Brexit Britain, I don't know, maybe I'm using the B word prematurely. It's created, an, a, a, and I never got the far right bit with violence towards women. I, I, I watched The Handmaid's Tale like you did, and I'd, I'd read it 20 years ago, and I, I never quite got it, but then they tried to ban abortion in Alabama and then you started reading about other assaults upon women's reproductive rights and you realise it is about control and power, always, and it's always about a certain type of man who wants a certain type of control and power over everybody else, so that's why sexuality gets weaponised, gender gets weaponised, ethnicity gets weaponised. Um, but I think ten years ago it wouldn't have mattered who the politician was or who the protester was. It's a, it's, a, it's a woman, physically much smaller than a man, being essentially grabbed around the throat and then dragged out of the room. So why didn't that happen to the man at Esther McVeigh's campaign launch? I'm sorry, Mark Field, and you're more than welcome to ring in and challenge this, but I don't think you'd have done that to a bloke, mate. 
And if you're telling me you did that instinctively, I'm telling you that doesn't sound like a defence to me. That sounds like a personality disorder or possibly even a habit. Mark Field has been suspended as a Foreign Office Minister pending an investigation after he grabbed a female climate change protester during a black tie dinner. The MP has now apologised to Janet Barker, although he insisted that guests had understandably felt threatened, while Ms Barker suggested Mr Field should go to anger management classes. Number 10 said Theresa May had seen footage of the incident and found it very concerning. From Westminster, Paul McNamara reports. This was meant to be the first day of head-to-head -head campaigning for the two men who hoped to lead the nation. But instead, another Conservative MP stole their attention. Should Mark Field be sacked, Mr Johnson? Encourage tactical voting, Mr Johnson. Should Mark Field be sacked? Can you be the Foreign Secretary? Your party's looking for leadership on this. Should what do you think of the incident? Are you back, are you back to being the nasty party? The questions this morning about this incident last night. The event, a mansion house dinner with the Chancellor's annual speech. The woman being manhandled, a climate change protester from Greenpeace, and the man doing the handling, a government minister, Mark Field. I feel very tired this morning. Um, I was shaken up after it happened and I wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. I was expecting a conversation, a dialogue with people, um, but I, I certainly didn't expect that. I don't intend to press charges. Um, I haven't had an apology for it from him. Um, my priority is the planet and the future of it and you know that, that's what I'm focusing on. The, the Tory government can sort out their own staff. Janet Barker was one of dozens of protesters, the majority women. Last night, Mr Field said he had instinctively reacted. He said he was genuinely worried she might have been armed, adding, I deeply regret this episode and unreservedly apologise to the lady concerned for grabbing her. He also referred himself to both the Cabinet Office and the Conservative Party. But after watching the footage today, Theresa May suspended him as a minister while investigations take place. Footage released from Greenpeace shows how easily they gained access. This is them outside the event, and inside, this is how close they got to the Governor of the Bank of England. A security review has been launched. You could see clearly that we were mostly women with sashes saying climate emergency. You know, she was holding uh, leaflets, she was trying to hand out leaflets. I don't think but that it's really... Just because you're, really... you're women and had climate emergency doesn't mean that you, there isn't a possibility that you could have had some sort of weapons on you. I understand that. I think that from the video it's clear that she was walking peacefully behind him and wasn't posing any credible threat. Labour say the Tories need to suspend Mr Field from the party. He was clearly out of control but what, what uh, came across to me was that sense of entitlement. You know, the, these people had invaded the space of the elite and oh my God, were they ang was he angry about it? He just completely and utterly overreacted. Today, party colleagues rallied to support Mr Field. Michael Fabricant saying the protester had a bag. What if it had contained acid or a knife? Nadine Dorries said we live in strange times. He acted instinctively. He's not trained. His instincts were right. And Johnny Mercer added, he's a lovely guy. Clearly looks panicked. Let's learn and move on. One man who doesn't think we should just move on is Mark Field's boss at the Foreign Office and candidate to be Prime Minister. Minister, should Mark Field be stacked? There's a process going on and it's going to be looked at independently. Is this the return of the Nazi party? Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr Hunt also condemned another discipline issue from within the party last night. Messages sent to Rory Stewart's supporter Antoinette Sambach. A fellow MP sent her, you two are a disgrace. Time you left the party, I think. This too has been investigated, this time by the chief whip. But while Jeremy Hunt spoke out today, his competition and front runner for the leadership remained silent on both issues all Mr. day. Johnson. Is your party fit to govern, Mr Johnson? You Shouldn't you be showing some leadership? Sir? How are you? How are you? Is your party really fit to govern, Mr Johnson? How are you? Very good. Day one of campaigning and an indicator of what the weeks ahead may hold. The underdog keen to show leadership. The favourite, silent. Grace is in Ealing. How do you view what happened? Grace, welcome to the programme. Hi, Grace, can you hear me? 
No, I don't think she can, which is disappointing. Oh, hello. Oh, there you are. Hi. Hello. Oh, there you are. Hi. It's not Grace. My name's Ravia. <laughs> In that case, what do you say? Ravia? Ravia. Hello. Ravia. Hi. <laughs> I didn't know you were speaking to me. Hi. Well, I, I can understand why, but you can call me Brian. <laughs> Oh, well, that's good. Hi, Brian. How Thanks, are you? Grace. Go on. Um, I mean, I'm just going to pick up on what Roman was saying. and um, The police I mean, officer. Re- yes, police officer that you were just speaking to, was talking to Sam. And uh, putting any kind of political inclinations or how, because actually how we vote or what our political inclinations are really, we can set it aside. Roman's view, um, first of all, is wrong entirely in law. Um, how do you know? Saying, Oh, well, I'm a barrister. Oh. I have practiced in criminal law, and I and I have practiced mm. from a set of chambers uh, in, in London. Uh, and I've got extensive experience in criminal law, and I've got expe- extensive experience in domestic violence cases and generally uh, cases of a violent nature. Okay. Now, first of all, trespassing is not a criminal act. It's not a criminal offence. When you trespass onto somebody's property with the intention to commit, to commit a burglary, for example, that's when it becomes burglary and it's a criminal offence. So that's that. Um, and quite frankly, if you are going to trespass into somebody's property or a private dinner function or a shop... Um, the, the the owner has every right to ask you to leave and then if you do not leave they have the right to use and this is the key words or the key words reasonable force and that's what it all boils down to whether he used reasonable force and in order to decide whether he used reasonable force really you've got to look at how he reacted how other people reacted and in my view looking at it to be honest I've been absolutely horrified and I, I cannot understand in what what age we are trying to even begin to justify the fact that not only does he wait for her, in my view, to to approach his side of the table, he grabs her, pushes her quite with quite a significant amount of force up against a wall, and then continues by the back of her, with grabbing the back of her neck, to take her out. There are other people there, and I understand that those people were escorted very politely out of the premises and his actions and he's an mp he should be held to account in my view he should be completely held to account he holds a public position and for him to behave in such a way in which we're talking a lot about instinct and immediate you know oh well he just reacted instinctively they've been in the room for about four minutes at that point, it's not suddenly a surprise. They haven't just barged in. They but if she, if she was, if she was um, moving quite quickly towards, uh, we assume the Chancellor of the Exchequer, um, w- was that not a good reason for him to try and stop her in his in her tracks? Or as he put it, there was no security present, and I was for a split second genuinely worried she might have been armed. Um, he is six foot something odd. You know, he's a big guy. Um, he watches her approach. He, the instinctual thing, you may think, you get up, you block her, or okay, if you don't, you push her back with your hand open palm, right? Put her, push her back. He goes a lot further than that. Than that. Um, he, he goes beyond that, Eddie, straight Brian. He goes well beyond that, and he pushes her up against the wall, and then he continues to pretty much manhandle her and grab her neck. Now, that's going beyond reasonable force. Now, if you do that to somebody, and I think Sam raised this, if you do that to somebody on the street, you will get arrested for common assault. And um, Roman's point earlier, which is, again, entirely wrong, and this is actually worrying for me, given what Roman does, um, a common assault happening in the privacy of somebody's home or happening in a VIP event is still a common assault as it would be happening on the street. Let's not mistake that. It does not matter where it happens. It does not matter who is present. It could just be with two people. It is still an assault. And as far as I can see, and as, to be honest, if this was to go before, uh, if he was to get arrested for it, I know she's not pressing charges. If it was a domestic incident, it wouldn't matter if she wanted to press charges or not, but it's not. But if this was um, investigated, I've no doubt in my mind that he would be charged with assault. His behaviour has been absolutely outrageous. I wonder, uh, Grace slash Ravio, h- how, mm. what you think of the fact this... Gravia, this, maybe. This, <laughs> this, <laughs> this single piece of footage, and, the, and I've, I've tried to describe the stuff that went on before and after, but this single piece of footage is dividing people so mm. vociferously. What do you think it is? 
I think, to be honest, uh, and I did say that, oh, well, you know, let's put our political inclinations aside. I think it has a lot to do with the current climate, as everything does. I think the immediate reaction that I've been hearing throughout the day, and I've been following this on and off throughout the day, I've heard it on Nick Ferrari's show, I've heard it on James O'Brien, and then very recently on Sheila's show. And it seems to me that people are immediately thinking that this is an argument of left versus right, that it's green priests, mad lefties against, oh, well, you know, our right to do whatever, you know, our right to, to defend ourselves. And really, it shouldn't be about that, but it is, because as is with everything in this political climate, things are divisive. Things are always, uh, it's not a part of, oh, you guys are too, you guys are snowflakes, and they're such early, you guys aren't. And really, the way that I approach it is how I would approach my work, really, is to set aside what my personal um, opinion is or my personal inclination is politically and to look at it on an evidence-based fact. And really, when, and I really do implore these people that are calling up. And, you know, I know there's been criticism that some of them are women and, you know, women should be standing together and then women are going, no, just because I'm a woman, it doesn't mean I have to. And then it, it becomes a bigger argument and a bigger discussion. But I really would implore the people um, who are saying and who are continuing to justify his behaviour is to really to really think about what it means to justify that level of, of um, aggression towards somebody who you know, hasn't just appeared out of nowhere. Okay, she's walking in, in, a, in, a, in a sort of, in a speedy manner, if you, if you may say, to, 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 to deliver leaflets or whatever. But I've been hearing a lot about, well, we don't know what she had on her. And I think that's just an excuse. It really is an excuse. It's not about what she had done. It. It's a, it's, there is a bigger issue of, well, you know, she automatically has to be stopped because they've caused such an, uh, such an inconvenience right. to people. That's I'm, my view on it. No, and, and I'm grateful for it. Before we let you go, uh, if you find a wallet in the street, would you hand it in? <laughs> I don't know what's in the wallet. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. That's a barrister talking. I, I'm feeling very silly this morning because I'm 99% I'm sure that if a pro-fox hunting protester had breached security at the Mansion House speech when Gordon Brown was Chancellor of the Exchequer, and my studio guest this morning, David Miliband, who was Foreign Secretary at the time, had sort of grabbed her by the throat and then pushed her up against a pillar and, and, and manhandled her out of the room, I'd be disgusted. I, I wouldn't care what party the politician belonged to or what the source of the protest was. But I'm also 99.9% .9 sure that all of the reaction or most of the reaction I've seen this morning so far is based almost entirely upon the who of this ugly story rather than the what of it. And just by way of almost perfect illustration, um, it really is perfect illustration of how absolutely bovine this, this sort of side-picking is. Here is a chap called Piers Corbyn tweeting earlier today. Piers Corbyn, of course, is the um, brother of, of Jeremy Corbyn. So you can decide which quotes side and quotes you think he's on. He tweets this morning, The real question is how should brainwashed, deranged, extinction rebellion protesters who are manipulated to help rob and control us all by the world's richest, most evil globalist forces be dealt with? They need psychiatric help. And, of course, um, Jeremy Corbyn is not his brother's keeper, but in just in terms of lazy polarisation and side-picking, I thought that might be interesting. Well, what's happened to us? You, you just also have a look at my Twitter now, at Mr. James O'B, because more footage has emerged of a much bigger picture, and there are other protesters and other men dealing with the female protesters in ways that, on a scale of 1 to 10, would hit about 2. If Mark Field is at 7 or 8, with the nature and the apparent loss of control and the anger of his reaction, all the other protesters are being dealt with at a one or a two. They, they are being held, their arms are being held, they're being led away from the fray, but they're not being in any way treated like Mark Field chose to treat this woman, which is why he has unreservedly apologised. He acknowledges that he really messed up. Rush of blood to the head. So why are people defending him? 0345 6060 Let's go to the Faroe Islands. We don't, we don't take enough calls from the Faroe Islands. Daniel is in there in Tors Torshaven. Daniel, what would you like to say? Hi James, good morning. Um, yeah, first of all, I'd like to say that I don't uh, support the violence towards women at all. Um, however, what I is there every, like is there a however there now, Daniel? Really? No, I, right. Yeah, but let me finish. In I, the situation, I will, I will. in the let me finish. In the situation of Markfield, um, 
Sadiq Khan and the press are undermining the security of our politicians. And so Sadiq is, Khan is undermining the security well, of our yep, politicians? Yep, yep. Can you with just explain? Comments, with his comments. Which right, comments? Right, comment. No, I, I will let you okay. finish, but I just, you've already okay. finished that bit, so I'm asking you about it. Well, how is, how is yes. Sadiq Khan undermining the well, safety? How is the politician by, um, Sadiq Khan, who's in receipt of more death threats than any other politician in the country, undermining the safety of politicians? Right. So basically, he was... Um, talking bad of Mark Field for his actions last night. Uh, I worked uh, in Africa and I've done all my security training, all of my close protection. I just, I just need a little bit more. Sorry, Daniel. Down. I need right, a little okay. bit more because I've seen some of the stuff mm -hmm. that Sadiq Khan receives. I'm doing an event with him right, next okay, week. And I'm not talking about just the, we're talking about the Mark Field situation. No, but you, you said Sadiq is, Khan is undermining was, the yes, safety yes, of politicians. Because of, his, because of his words in the media this morning. What, what did he say? Morning. I haven't seen it. Well, he was talking about his uh, handling of him and he should actually resign from his position. That's what he said. And right. how is that undermining so, the safety of politicians, right. Daniel? So let, let, me, let me finish. If you saw the situation last night, that woman approached Mark Field. She had She didn't. She was bag. trying to get past she, him. Yeah, yeah. She had a bag at uh, chest height that could have they had a concealed weapon in it. If she would have pulled out a, a pistol and put a bullet through his head, the headlines would have been completely different today. We I mean, are you high? Now, most politicians are subject to minimum amount of security training and uh, so why is he why do you think he's apologized but why do you think he's apologized unreservedly yeah because he, he's probably worried about his job and most politically correct people um are, are slagging him off when in reality people shouldn't even be breaching the security and if he, someone had put a bullet through his head can you imagine what would have happened then I presume that you're a fully functioning adult human being, but you're talking well, absolutely. about an entirely yeah. theoretical scenario where it's okay well, to... Well, it's not theoretical. They breach security, it's, it's, as you said. No, no, said no, 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 no. The yeah. gun. It, do yeah. you know what theoretical means, Daniel? Yes, absolutely. Right, so, yeah. the, so you said if he'd, she'd put a bullet in his head. You understand why that is yeah. a theoretical situation? It is, it is. But yes. the so why have you phoned up to talk to me about something that hasn't happened when I've invited you to come and talk to me about something that has happened? Right, OK, but if it... But no, you're not going to answer that, so I'll ask you for, for, again, just because I've let you finish now, could you explain to me how the politician in the United Kingdom who is in receipt of more death threats and security concerns than any other is somehow endangering the safety of politicians? Take your time. Okay, so he's, he's saying that it's perfectly acceptable for people to intrude on... on he hasn't said that, or, though, Daniel. Now you're actually lying. No, no, but, no, he said that he should resign. No, but when did he say it was perfectly acceptable for people to march into to no, private functions and he, protest? He, uh, okay, so it's not perfectly acceptable for people. No, to so sit that there was and, a lie. So let's no. go back to the question: How lie. is how is the British politician in receipt of more threats Threat. than any other? And have you hung up, Daniel? You see, this is what happens. And and I'm going to return to the rhetoric of picking a side. So if you think you're on Daniel's side, just look at him, lying embarrassing himself, endorsing violence against women, using a phrase like politically correct, talking about something that hasn't happened at all in order to somehow justify something that has happened, and metaphorically soiling himself live on national radio. Why would you want to be on his team, whatever the parameters of that team may be? David is in Hampstead. David, good morning. Good morning. Hello, James. Um, so I, I kind of agree with you, and yet I kind of don't agree with you. So I agree that, with you. That's allowed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I agree with you because I think there is a polarisation. I, I do think there is, and I think there are people from both sides to be honest, who are just jumping the gun. On one hand, they're saying, just sack him because you're conservative, but on the other side, there's people saying, she's a lefty, so do what you want to her. So, but I think. The, the so do you think, because that's. I need a bit of help with that. You think there are people. And, I mean, why is it even a left-right issue? I suppose because he's a Conservative MP, it can be. Yes. But there are, there are plenty yes. of people who, who care passionately about the climate who, who would describe themselves as Conservatives with a large C or, yes, or, or, I, or as right-wing. But you think, you think that there are people who you would typify as left who would be cool with this if it was one of their MPs who behaved in exactly the same way? Because I don't know if that's true. So, so maybe yes, maybe no. But what I think is, I think people are kind of missing just if you strip it back and you look at it from just to say a pure legal perspective. Yes. I think, I just think first, I think there's two elements that, that uh, no one's actually mentioned. One is some common law and the use of force under common law. And the other one is something called Section 3 of the Criminal Law Act. I won't like all of them all in full. However, in short, 
the common law states that someone can use force as is reasonable in the prevention of crime or, or, or you know, pre um, preventing someone um, causing harm. Yes, which is now, why again, the, the footage of all the other men dealing yes, with all exactly. the other female protesters yes. is, is, is actually yes. quite bad news for Mark Field. Yes, yes. A then, as is the, the report, hand. Robert Peston, a journalist who I think we can all agree is... Um, is very trustworthy, describes other guests at the table telling him that no one was remotely alarmed or, or, or frightened yes. because they'd seen yes. exactly what was happening. Mark Field had, had, a, had an absolute meltdown here. Yes, oh, no, I, I hear that. But, and then also, I'm just going to say that the criminal law, Section 3 Criminal Law Act, is, a, is, is similar in that a certain person can use force as is reasonable. And so really that, that's where I think... And, and that's why the footage is so damaging for Mark Field, because lots of other men in that room are using force that is reasonable. He clearly didn't. But, if his force had been reasonable, he wouldn't have apologised unreservedly, would he? But just, but just, just, just the question to kind of be devil's advocate. Well, well, yeah, I don't well, think we need advocate. devil. If it was your mum, you wouldn't want someone ringing up a radio station talking but about what being was, devil's what if advocate. What it was my dad? Would I think? Would I view it the same if it You're was not, my dad? I, I'm not sure. No, well, I wouldn't. I, 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 I've, I've said this. I don't know if, if it gets me a ticking off from from some of my feminist friends, but I, I feel differently because of the physical threat. Unless your dad was tiny or disabled, or, or, or no, I'm, I'm being very serious. Unless your dad was demonstrably physically yeah. less strong than the woman attacking him, um, then but generally why, speaking, it's the physical why is, superiority. Why is grabbing someone by the, the sort of the, the scruff at the neck or sort of by the back. Like why is that necessarily worse than, for example, really forcefully grabbing someone by the arm? Because, I mean, that hurts. Either I, way, I don't hurts. think anyone's ever been arm wrestled to death, have they? No, but it's more likely... But, but, you, but people have, like you're people have been someone. strangled to death, of course. Yes, I agree. So it becomes a very uh, different behaviour. But I do think... And, do think and in law, in, way, he's not in law, I, I think that a uh, choke holding somebody would be a more serious offence, usually, by no means always, than giving someone a dead arm. But he wasn't, he wasn't choking her. I just think that's a... a I think that's something... I was that using been... your own language. You said grabbing someone by the throat. I don't know what you meant by, by the, that. By the scruff. I said by the scruff. Oh, okay. By the scruff of it. Okay. I, I, don't think, I don't think he was choking... I don't think what he did was necessarily correct. But I, he wasn't Necessarily correct. No, fine, I'm, I'm clear on that. I thought because I, thought I, I was using your... For, uh, for the police to assess. Using your words. I think he... Uh, well, for me, when he gets her up against the pillar, he's face to face with her. The scruff of the neck, I think, of being behind. But these are, these are, these are slightly pedantic. Can I... I mean, don't take offence at this, but... I, I, I don't quite understand how you would react to this with anything but revulsion. I, I, I think the point at which he's kind of, like you said, got in her face, that point, I think, is I personally think he's overstepped the mark. But I think... But that's, again, it overstepped point, the mark. That, 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 you know, that sounds like someone's sort of cheated at golf. I mean, this is repulsive no, think, behavior. But I think if someone... And you don't look, sound I, repulsed. I, I, I'm just intrigued psychologically. I, and, I, and also, just forgive me, because I am late for the news. Seeing as we, you, you introduced the concept of it being a politically polarised incident, what, what are your politics? To be honest, at the moment, nothing. I well, can't, okay, I can't historically really, then, how, you just, if, you were, if you were forced to describe yourself as either left or right or, or, or neither, what would you say? I'd, I'd say, I'd say centre to centre right. I wouldn't. Okay. Uh, no, no, just, just for my own, really just, for, just, just, just for my own research. It's two minutes after yeah. eleven. Slightly different show today, given that we devoted the first half hour of the program, or so. Actually, it was a little late arriving to a fascinating conversation with David Miliband. I'm going to try and book him for my podcast. Full, full disclosure, because um, it, it struck me as very, very interesting. I'm going to try and get Rory Stewart on it as well, actually, because he's. Um, a figure of great fascination, uh, even as he quit the field of the um, uh, conservative leadership battle. Um, this week's is rather good, actually, Frank Skinner. I, I really, really liked him. I have to be honest with you. I was quite nervous about that interview because it, I'd been told he could be a little bit tricky. But we, we got on very well, and I, I thought it was a very interesting interview. Someone else I'm, I'm keen to talk to on the podcast is Nazir Afzal, who was the chief prosecutor in the North West. Um, mostly, or, or, or I think I think it's fair to say, more responsible than any other CPS lawyer for bringing those so-called grooming gangs to justice. And as such, he's someone who I think his legal opinion is is always interesting. The thing about legal opinions is that they remain opinions, and, and lawyers disagree with each other. So indeed, do judges. But I, I, oddly, I was thinking about him this morning because there's a horrible story about my own religion, the Catholic religion, and the most senior. Catholic in the country has been strongly criticised by a child sexual abuse inquiry for placing the reputation of the church above the welfare of children. 
when allegations were made against priests. It's, um, as you know, my school, my Catholic school, has already featured fairly prominently in the child sexual abuse inquiry, and, and it's the chairwoman of that independent inquiry who said that she was truly shocked by the scale of abuse within the Catholic Archdiocese of Birmingham over several decades. Um, the diocese, oddly enough, into which my Catholic prep school fell, where two teachers are currently in prison for abusing children. Um, she said that the church had failed to save children because it was determined to protect its reputation. It's grisly reading for Cardinal Vincent Nichols, and it should be a source of, of national shame and outrage, in the same way that we all feel shame and outrage about the girls and young women who were abused and, and raped by the so-called grooming gangs in the north of England. And I can't, I still can't get my head around how stories like this appear in our news on a regular basis and don't prompt massive outpourings of, of empathy and outrage. Empathy for the victims and outrage for the perpetrators. It's, it's why I've struggled to go to church since the inquiry into my own school was published. And yet, when the offenders are portrayed as Muslim, you can pretty much, you, you, well, you could, you could heat a house with the fury that would appear on my inbox within moments. Um, and I guess that feeds in, oddly, to the conversation that we're having today about hypocrisy and double standards. It's not about the behaviour anymore, it seems to me, increasingly. And I really don't think I'm guilty of this, but, but, I, but maybe I am. Maybe nobody thinks they're guilty of it, they just think everybody else is. But I don't feel more disgusted by the behaviour of a, of a Muslim sex offender than I do by a Catholic sex offender. And I speak as a Catholic, I'm not going to stick up for the ones who ostensibly belong to the same faith as me. Well, I don't, just don't get it. But as you look at footage of a, of a Conservative MP, in the words of Nazir Afzal, the former Chief Prosecutor in the northwest of England, it's an assault and should be charged as such. There is no justification for this. No question, he adds. I disagree with the last line. There's always a question. That's why we've got lawyers, Nazir. But it doesn't seem to me that much of the coverage, and, I, and I'm not going to sort of name names, but a lot of the coverage seems to have nothing to do with an analysis of the behaviour and everything to do with the identity of the protagonists. And that's a recipe for absolute disaster. Oh, thank goodness for you, Eddie. Um, you, you just dropped me a text saying, why is it that I think I have everything in black and white all sorted out and then I listen to you and I haven't got a clue which way up I am? Whether you're rub rubbing me up the wrong way or whether I'm agreeing with you, James, it's a show like no other. Thanks. Dot, dot, dot. I think. Well, I, I, get, I get why you've added the I think. Because it, it must be quite reassuring just to not think. And just to go, what colour's my scarf? Okay, what was the, what, who's, what's the bloke who's grabbed the woman? Yeah, he's a Tory, is he? Right, that, and, and she's an environment protest. Right, yeah, 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 ab absolutely fine. She's lucky he didn't go further. What if she'd had a suicide vest strapped to her dress? Uh, yes. And then you end up like the fellow who rang from the Faroe Islands. Just, just to the vaguest question. And then you end up lying through your teeth and then hanging up humiliated. It's quite incredible. Like the bloke who rang in earlier this week, again, pick a side. I'm suggesting that Boris Johnson um, is hiding from scrutiny. A statement of fact, his own people are deliberately trying to keep him away from cameras. Poor soul rings in from Salford, claiming that, um, uh, well, just talking absolute gibberish because he saw the story. He saw that Boris Johnson was getting a little bit of jip and he thought, right, to arms. It's just madness. And I don't know how it ends. Natalie's in Hackney. Natalie, what made you pick up the phone? Hello. Hello, Natalie. What's on your mind? Hi. Hi there, James. Hi. Um, it's really in regards to the Mark Field. Yes. Um, had you heard of him before? I had never heard of him before. And the only, basically, last night when, you know, my partner came in and he was on, you know, looking on his phone, he said, oh my God. And mm. I said, you know, what? He says, just, an MP, Tory MP, just grabbed a, a lady and sort of thrown her. The way he, you know, he didn't go into detail, sure. but I just thought, oh, right, what's, you know, what's happening? Yes. And only when I sort of saw it with my own two eyes, I felt like, a, a, you know, cold inside. I just felt, my God, in, you know, this is happening. This man, twice the size of her, yes. grappling a woman by the throat and then frog-marching her all the way through the hall. Yes. 
you know, while while, while in the in the same room, and this must be right. why the other people at his table don't look remotely alarmed by no. the approach of the woman in the same room. No. Other Please. female protesters are being escorted from the space by other male, I presume members of staff rather than guests perhaps, or maybe there are other mm. guests as well, without any of the aggression or the, or the uh, behaviour that you describe. So that, that is, that's the worst bit to emerge actually yeah. since this story broke. Well, yes, and I mean, you know, the thing that sort of, that got me as well, you can hear uh, the, you know, protesters shouting, peaceful protest, peaceful protest. And, you know, James, to be quite honest with you, you know, all this sort of, he's come out now, he's referred himself to the, is it the cabinet? Um, yeah, it's the cabinet office. I think. Office, yes. you know, he's done that immediately. Well, and it's the apologised unreservedly that, in, yeah, I give him credit for that. He has apologised. He's, not, cla he's no. not claiming that she's a suicide bomber or phoning up from the Faroe Islands right, to tell no. lies. He's yeah, apologised you know, unreservedly. Yeah. James, you know something, I do understand what you're saying, but I'm telling you now, uh, as a person, I've been on the receiving end of domestic violence uh, for a long time. Well, not anymore, Good. but, you know, for when I was younger in two relationships. And this is exactly what they do. Apologise unreservedly okay. and are quite together. I've been taken by the person who abused me to the hospital where they admitted to it was my fault and apologising unreservedly until, you know, wanted to know whether it's going to be reported or not. Okay. I'm sorry, this is like classic. The way he just sprang into action and grabbed that lady by the throat. It suddenly stopped thought, me in my tracks. My I, I know I asked the last caller what his politics were, and, and, mm. and, and I'm going to ask you the same. If, if Would you yeah. describe yourself as left, right or neither? I'd say left. Yes. Left centre a bit. But well, I he mean, said um, centre right and he was sort of defending <laughs> Mark Field, Sort of defending. Oh, it's so yeah, weird. It is, I just think it's abominable, and this is where we've come now. But if it was Tom so Watson, point, or David Miliband, or Ed Miliband, or Chris Bryant, or, but, but I wouldn't feel any different. I know I wouldn't feel any different. Of course different. not. Do you know what, if it would be, you know, I've, I've, I've got quite a few male um, relatives in my family, and, you know, I don't care who you are, I don't care who you are, I don't want to see, I don't want to hear that, I don't even want, you know, even that tone to be used, uh, you know, to your wife or your girlfriend. Well, that's what I would have thought. Hey, right, hey, here's the thing, now. Do you want to play a little game? Yeah, go on. Guess who said this in May, OK? You ready? Yeah, go on. They said it in the House of Commons. The UK remains mm. committed to helping women all over the world to feel safe and protected in the work they do so they can speak freely and be part of the change we all want. Who do you think said that in May? On 9th of May, 2019. Don't say it's him, please. Was it? No, they don't. <laughs> Toast. Who's that? It's Mark Field, mate. He's... Oh, God. <sighs> I, I let you do the side today, Natalie. I think I, I, might, I, have, I, I might have a morning off. Half. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> it's quarter past 11. <laughs> Looking at this Mark Field story, inevitably, like everybody else's this morning, but trying to perhaps take a step back from the fray and just ask whether... Is it, I mean, I'm, I'm 47. I still feel very young uh, in the context of experience and changing my mind about things and enjoying the, 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 the discovery of new things. Um, but I don't think it used to be like this. I, I'm trying to think back to... Is there an example of a Labour MP? There was when John Prescott punched the protester that had thrown an egg at him. That seemed to me to be to be perfectly reasonable response. Someone had thrown an egg at him. He was under attack. If, if Farage had taken a swing at the bloke who threw a milkshake at him, I think it would have been understandable, don't you? And, and I mean, my opinion of Nigel Farage is not very hard to, to work out. Also, the milkshake, those. Is there an example here? And I've got one in the back of my mind, but it's a little bit... It's a little bit close to home, so I shall hold off on necessarily sharing that just yet. So, I, I mean... It, it seems to me that if you are defending Mark Field this morning, you're doing so because you somehow think he's on your side. I'd love you to give me a ring and tell me your side of what? 03456060973. These whataboutarists saying things like, well, what if it had been uh, 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 the other way round? Or what if it had been a man? Or what if she'd had a gun? Or, the point is that she isn't a man. She didn't have a gun, and it wasn't the other way around. So if you're trying to justify behaviour by saying, well, something completely different might have happened, give your head a wobble. No?
Or am I missing the point? I mean, do, do you do you walk around the place treating everybody as if they might have a gun? And why didn't all the other men in the room get as frightened and as furious as Mark Field did? Why did the other men in the room who escorted the female protesters from the space manage to do so in a way that has been filmed and hasn't offended anybody? And I, I, and I take that point on board, actually, from, from the last caller, Natalie. He might have apologised unreservedly. It doesn't mean he means it. And the, 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 the press release that goes along with that apology sounds an awful lot to me like the opposite of unreserved apology. It sounds highly reserved, if that's even a word. 20 minutes after 11 is the time. John's in Chichester. John, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, mate. Yeah, James, I've watched this on, on, on time and time again on the BBC News Channel. And Mark Field did not act distinctively. If you watch it again closely, he actually picked his moment. He was prepared. He knew that lady was going to walk past him. He, he moved his chair into a position. He was like a lion pounding on a gazelle. But he didn't know... <laughs> it's in, 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 get all David Attenborough on me, John, honestly. If you, if you, no, if you, if you look what he did, it, totally I shameful. I, and I'm more concerned about the, about the females in that room who stood by and doing nothing. So yeah. I'd like to ask this question. Would it be okay for if, if a, a burly male, bigger than Mark Field, had a rubby tackled him and then said, oh, I thought he was going to assault that woman. He was going over the top. I think that man would have been quite within his rights to attack Markfield and say, well, he was assaulting a woman because Markfield used that any excuse that she may have assaulted somebody. So if he can do it, why can't it be done to him? Right, and, and I presume, perhaps wrongly, that you identify politically as leaning a little bit more to the left than to the right? I don't, I, you know, that's, that's actually a description which I... I, I I think, like Brexit here, I think it should be abolished. I, yeah, I, I, probably right. My politics is fairness for everybody and equality for everybody. Yes. Not left, not right. Just human compassion and being a human being. That's my politics. Some people would say that was left. Um, I'm Oddly enough, I'm not one of them. There's yes. plenty of people who, who, who are, who are yeah. right-wing that, that also I believe know. in fairness and equality. They're well, just very quiet at the moment, aren't they? Yeah, well, the world is changing and uh, it's, it's frightening. Is it changing or has it always been like this? I don't know. How old are you? I think, well, <laughs> I'm, I'm in my 50s, but we, I, I, remember, I remember when we had, after the first Iraq war, or, or after 9-11, when the comment was used, you're either with us or against us. Yes. And that, I, I think that phrase is, is more resonant today than any time. Yeah, possibly it is, and yet in the in the context of fundamentalist terrorism, it's easy to pick a flipping side. Yeah, it's just, uh, uh, or is it though? Because of course, there's plenty of people who think that by picking a side in that context, you are uh, compelled to be vile about all Muslims. Which brings us back to that bizarre call from the Faroe Islands, claiming that the man in receipt of more threats and security um, uh, problems than I think any other politician in the country, Sadiq Khan is somehow responsible for making politicians let safe. And, and again, I, I'm sorry to pick on the fella, but he did ring in. It, it's, it's not just that people could have arrived at that school of thought that falls apart so completely under the scantest scrutiny, but not just to have arrived at that thought, like you're in the pub and you say it, but to think, I'm going to ring a national radio station and say, I don't want to sound ungrateful, I love getting these calls, it helps me understand the world around me. But John's right, isn't he? You just, you just don't do that. How do you know that you don't do that? Well, there was lots of other female protesters in the room, and all the men that dealt with them managed to do so without doing what Mark Field did. And his defenders? It just, it's just gibberish. She might have had a gun. Everyone in the room might have had a gun. She, that she might have done this, she might have done that, she might have been a man. Culminating in uh, Joe Cox's memory being cited in defence of a man who attacked a woman. That's, I mean, if you really had to pick something, as David Miliband was saying earlier, about if someone had said a few years ago that, that this could happen, that somebody with Donald Trump's record could end up in the White House, you probably would have laughed. It does all feel linked. I'm not quite sure how. That might well be the subject of my next book if I... I hope my publisher's not listening, if I ever get around to uh, signing for it. The time is 24 minutes after 11. Adrian is in Bristol. Adrian, what the heck is going on? Well, I think whoever can come up with the answer to that is uh, is, is surely in line for for a, a, a hefty hefty payday. I think um, <laughs> I think um, it comes back to well, I think there are many nuanced things that are going on in the world oh, right now, okay. and I think that there is um, 
you know, they're in in trying to make sense of it. I think in certain places it can it it, it can be oversimplified. But I think one thing that is really useful is um, your uh, your term of footballification yes. of 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 wider discourse, and and that really you know that really rang true when you were talking about. Um, people feeling the need to pick sides. I'm just um, going to pause you there. I'll be right back, I promise. Yeah. Um, Mark Field okay. has just been suspended as a minister. I suspect he's wishing he'd probably made that decision himself. It would have looked a lot better, but there we are. Some breaking news for you. Mark Field has been suspended as a minister. Um, uh, presumably people somewhere, hopefully one of them will ring me. Uh, 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 well, if he'd been a woman, he wouldn't have had to be suspended or some such nonsense, but we are where we are. The thing about the footballification agent, and I hope I invented that word. I shall certainly be claiming that I did if nobody can prove it <laughs> otherwise. Um, the thing about yeah. that is, is, is I can actually get my head around that. But I, I don't yeah. know, when I spoke to Steve a few weeks ago, I don't know if you were listening, it was when he said his wife was Indian that I found myself thinking, well, I don't know what side you think you're on. Because I, if I had to define my side, I'd have said what the, the Irish fella John just said a minute ago, I'd have just said fairness and equality within, you know, within the bounds of plausibility and possibility. I just don't think people should be treated differently because they're brown or black or, or, or any other colour under the sun. And then he said, but my wife's Indian. So what side do Mark Field's defenders think that they're on? I don't know anymore. I, yeah, I don't know. I think there is. I think there's an element of, um, you know, you've you you may begin um, in an orientation or or, or, or having a, a side yes. um, that you know you you back your team through thick and thin, and you know you you, you stand by them through the ups and the downs, and and even though you you, you, you you're spouting this stuff that is you know you, you you feel like you're doing the right thing by your team. Do you necessarily 100%? Well, do you acknowledge what you're actually saying and, and the ramifications? I, I, well, you clearly don't, because that's how your poor yeah. fella ended up. And, and listen, on any other programme, he'd have been able to... Not on any other programme, but on plenty of other programmes, he would have been able to, to, to bang on uninterrupted, saying things that aren't true. And then when you say, mate, that's not... Oh, let me finish, let me finish. But you're talking gibberish. He, that, that's, that, that would have gone unchecked and unchallenged, which is perhaps why people never stop to actually examine the sources of their own position. They've yeah. picked a side, they've started lobbying, and you're not allowed to ask why. If you ask why, you're a condescending, sneering, sanctimonious Ramona, or whatever it was the son called me. Well, I think it's um, also, I mean, if it was like to to extend the to extend the idea of football just a little bit. I mean, I'm a Tottenham fan, and if it if on Derby Day, if it's on the North London Derby Day, um, I start extolling the virtues of the way. Um, Unai Emery uh, picks his teams. Um, yeah, I, I'm going to get shot. Yeah, you know, I'm going I'm to get laughed out of town. Yes, yeah, so just yeah, just yeah, for the record, when you when you said shot, that was a figure of speech. Yeah. Don't phone the police, shot, Nigel. Don't, don't phone the police, Nigel. Yeah. It's a joke. All right, carry on. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. And there it is. Um, I, I, and, and I get it with the, uh, Arsenal Spurs, you tread care, but what side do the people defending this, this geezer who's now been suspended by his own employers, what side do they think they're on? Thank you, Adrian. I'll take calls in answer to that question. I'm, I'm carrying on with this for a little bit longer because the story is developing and it makes a blessed change from talking about the Tory leadership campaign. If I'm describing you, give me a call. We don't have to be enemies. Surely we can both be on the side of human beings who don't think men should assault women without good reason. And it's very, very hard to think of a good reason, but being a climate change protester it just can't be a good reason. Especially not when the room's full of men dealing with other women protesting who are um, not being manhandled in this way. It is an astonishing little development. It goes, almost goes without saying. I don't know if you've come across this bloke, um, Brendan O'Neill, but... In a way, I, I kind of envy you if you haven't. So the jokes of a type started earlier by assaulting Mark Field's hand with her throat. A rather excellent Twitter account called Twill Dunn made this joke. By assaulting Mark Field's hand with her throat, the intolerant green movement once again show their hatred of free speech and debate. My latest piece for Spiked. Now, I, I can still say with a degree of certainty that that's a joke. And then uh, a little later on, hi, Fraser Nelson. Fraser Nelson edits The Spectator. He says, it's been 40 minutes since footage emerged of Mark Field violently manhandling a protester and you haven't published a column from Brendan O'Neill saying it's the logical conclusion of Liberals milkshaking Nigel Farage. Is he ill? And that was uh, uh, 40 minutes after the event. Fast forward to this morning and The Spectator have just published a piece on their website 
The Moral Arrogance of the Mansion House Climate Protesters by Brendan O'Neill. It's a living, I suppose. Mm -hmm.